On the season three premiere and our Halloween special, we're back. We're, we are back and we'll be telling 13 true crime murder stories that happened on, around, or because of Halloween. Really? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's outstanding. Right. And we're also going to play the Wheel of Death with a lucky contestant. That's even better. Exactly. Yep. All that and more today on Two Murder Morons. What's up? We're back. <laughs> We're back. Hello. Season three, baby. Where were you? What do you mean, where was I? One, two. Hey, I, you. your scream was so intense. I was so entertained and enthralled by it that I couldn't couldn't look away from you. I lost track. Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> All right, yeah. We're back. We're back. Hello. <laughs> We're back, everybody. Welcome to Two Murder Morons and our very special Halloween special. Yes, as you can tell. As, as you can. We're dressed up. You I'm can wearing this fake ass sling on my arm. Is it? Is it because fake? It's not fake. <laughs> oh it, that sweatshirt and hat, it works out perfect because it, it looks like your arm is the bleeding thing that's sprayed all over you. Yeah, well, it was, a, you know, at one time. I've been this thing for like eight weeks. I don't know. Maybe longer. Who yeah. knows? So, can you guess what I'm supposed to be? Uh, a chameleon. A chameleon. <laughs> I know who you are. Beetlejuice, 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 Beetlejuice. I think you should wear that every show. The, 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 just the wig. Just oh, the not wig. the full. <laughs> yeah, nah, just the wig. <laughs> just have this on and never reference it again. Just, yeah, just wear it every so show. All new viewers are like, why is that guy wearing yeah, that crazy yeah. ass? Exactly. Hey. I my, think it fits you. Hey, my work. I think it looks good on It you. may keep people enthralled long enough to it check might, it out. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, like, I mean, it just gives you like a, I don't know, it's just a, keep <laughs> right. it. Keep it. Keep it. All right. We'll, we'll go with it. We got to get some disclaimers out of the way real quick. Oh, Lord. Here we uh, go. First of all, um, we are a true crime podcast, but yeah, we are. We like to introduce our own little sick, twisted sense of humor in there as well. But yep. please know we try to never make fun of victims or victims' families. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, if we do make fun of anybody, it's more about the idiots who commit these crimes. Or the, the cop, law enforcement, the you know, the whole. You know, somebody who screws up or yeah. something yeah, like that. Yeah, but, yeah, but nothing against the family. But yeah. It, so if if you're not cool with the mix of true crime and, and comedy a little bit, then turn away now. Yeah, and we're not true comedians. We're just I, I'm a smart ass. I'm good ad lib. I think it's pretty clear to everyone watching we're not professional comedians. I, I get that. I just want to let people know because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be like God. Man, I'm never gonna go see these guys. Well. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to worry about us showing up somewhere. Yeah. The other thing, uh, if you're listening to us right now and you're wondering why are these guys talking about their costumes, I can't see them. Yeah. It's because primarily we are a video podcast and uh, you can check us out on YouTube or Spotify for the video version. Yeah. 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 Uh, I am. Uh, <laughs> what's it say? Problem solver. There you go. Or does it say problem, problem solved? solved? It's oh, problem solved. Problem solved. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I took care of an issue at home. And what was solved. the issue? Well, you know, just issues. You ought to see the other person. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not in good shape. Oh, oh, God, dude. There's blood everywhere. Well, today we're talking about 13 real murders on All Hallows Eve. Are you ready to get with this going? Let's get it undid. Okay, let's All do right, this. Let's go. Okay. Are you running the? Yeah, you're running the show. You're the captain of the ship. Let's go. I am. Okay. Yep. Well, I wanted your approval. You know. Hey. You're kind of like a dad to me. Uh, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. All right. So this story is called a row over a missing bag of candy ends in murder. So uh, you could forgive a five year old becoming enraged after losing a bag of trick or treating sweeties and throwing a tantrum, right? Yeah, I get it. But a fifty five year old. Yeah. 54, okay. I don't think I would. No. Okay, well, this is Liddell Peoples, and he lost his cool on Halloween, night, or I'm sorry, Halloween 2011. I almost said 1978. That's when ho the movie Halloween takes yeah, yeah. See where my brain is. Wow. So Halloween night 2011, he's in a domestic disturbance in Chicago's South Side that turned very ugly. That explains a lot right there, Chicago yes. South Side. Not able to track down his bag of Hershey's, Jolly Ranchers, and Tootsie Rolls, he accused his partner... 
49-year-old Maria Adams of stealing them from him. Like must have been on crack. <laughs> As a way of response to the accusation, she threw a plate at his head. Oh. Peoples then picked up a knife and repeatedly stabbed her. She died in the hospital, um, and he got 30 years in prison. Good. Literally over some sweets. But, dude, we've seen, we've seen it worse. I mean, you know, people have been killed for a dollar. This is – that's true. I mean, Halloween candy is kind that's of a expensive. big – Yeah, It is nowadays. Good oh, Lord. Shit. Jeez. Crap. All right. This is – this one's titled, A Halloween Tradition Leads to a Bullet in the Head. Uh, chucking eggs at houses and cars mm. is a classic. You ever go egging? We used to go egging a lot. Yeah. We did egging. We'd soap people's stuff, and we threw corn, and we teepeed. Okay. Yeah, we, we all about this time of year. We did the teeping and the, I only did the egging once because then I felt too bad afterwards. I was like, ah, oh, that's gonna suck to clean no, up. I didn't really think about it. We, we only did it like we only just did it people we wouldn't care for. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We just had at least one. So after a long day at work and an evening of trick or treating with his girlfriend and her young son, twenty okay. one year old Carl Jackson was in no mood for his car to get egged. Ooh. On Halloween night, nineteen ninety eight. Hmm. Unfortunately, for all concerned, his car was egged. Oh. Uh, South Bronx is a tough neighborhood in New York, as yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure almost everybody knows. I don't think I would egg anything in, in the Bronx. So when Carl got out of his car uh, to basically you know, yell at the kid who uh, went, went sunny side up on his vehicle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. took a risk, right? Oh. I feel like you're, anytime you get out of your car in the Bronx, start yelling at somebody, yeah. you're taking a risk. Yeah, taking a risk. Uh, sadly, the risk did not pay off. Uh, 17-year-old Curtis Sterling, who had thrown the eggs at the car, okay. shot Carl in the head, killing him instantly. So, egg in the car wasn't enough. Right. He's got to shoot the guy he's now, to shoot too. the guy now. Yeah. A 17-year-old. Yeah. And this, this, is, this is him here. Uh, wow. Sterling was arrested, charged, and imprisoned for murder. And this is the best part. Every Halloween, Carl Jackson's mother... Sends her son's killer a card telling him she's glad he's rotting in prison. Wow. I mean, I get it. I get it. I, I, th- I, I mean, would probably... I'd do something stupid. Do right? something like yeah. that. Vengeful. Vengeful. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Oh, my God, dude. That's a nun. Now, well, we know... We talked about this guy in a yeah. very early episode of ours. Yes. Uh, but this happened in Amarillo, Texas. On October 31st, 1981, okay. 76-year-old nun sister, Tadia Benz, was raped and strangled in her covenant. That's I'm yeah. sorry, convent. I don't convent, know why I said covenant. Convent. Co- convent. Yeah. Um, on November 9th, Johnny Frank Garrett, this jackass picture to the left, yes. who lived across the street from her, was arrested for the crime. On February 11th, 1992, he was executed via lethal injection by the state of Texas. Good. Garrett's final meal was ice cream, and his final words were, because this we did an episode on famous last words yeah. and criminals. His final words before his execution uh, was, I'd like to thank my family for loving me and taking care of me, and the rest of the world can kiss my ass. Yeah. That sounds like something somebody would say after killing a nun Yeah, when you're a jackass. Yeah, dude, a fucking nun, dude. Sorry right. for the language. I mean, sorry. But, dude, of all people... Yeah. She devoted her life to God, you know. Right. And this guy has to go and... Rape and murder a nun in yeah. the convent. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, he should have been shot. Yeah. He, he had court. Uh, we're calling this one a Halloween house of horrors. Ooh. Uh, the scene Ohio teenager Devin Griffin walked into was like something out of a haunted house, he later said. Oh. Returning home from church on Sunday, October 31st, 2010, Devin found his brother Derek, mother Susan, and Susan's new husband, William Liskey, all dead, savagely murdered. Do you, oh, re- wow. you remember this one? There was only one suspect. Yep. William Liskey Jr. Mm-hmm. Suffering with schizophrenia and with a documented history of violence and wildly unpredictable behavior, the 24-year-old was quickly found at a local halfway house and arrested. He confessed, admitting to all three murders. Liskey, it transpired, had shot his father five times, bludgeoned his older stepbrother Derek to death with a hammer, and then raped and shot his stepmother, Susan. Yep, I remember this. Yeah. 
is crazy. Uh, Liskey Jr. would go on to take his own life in prison in 2015. Coward. I mean, yeah. I mean, he he's definitely got some issues. Oh, yeah. If, if, you, you think? Right. I mean, you rape the woman that's, you know, filling in as your mom. Yeah, your stepmom. Yeah. Mm. Crazy, crazy story. Yeah. Oh, look who it is. We recognize this, I recognize and I, this I had to show our thumbnail here. Of We just recently did an episode on these two jackasses. Yeah, we sure did. But I didn't remember that the final murder of theirs was, ho- well, yeah. it was on Halloween. You're right. Yeah. Yep. So Shirley Lynette Ledford yeah. was the fifth and thankfully final victim yes. of L.A. serial killers Lawrence Bittaker and Roy Norris. The two men are some of the cruelest serial killer duo, duos ever to disgrace the planet. I think there's. I think they had more victims. Oh, I'm sure. These are just the ones we, we yeah. know about, basically. Yeah, I just have a feeling they, they were involved in a few more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Known as the toolbox killers because of their vile and perverted penchant for tool-based torture in their van, yes. the sick pair would often tape record their crimes. Yep. On Halloween night, 1979, Bittaker and Norris snatched 16-year-old Shirley from a gas station where she was hitchhiking home after a Halloween party. Uh, They beat her, raped her, tortured her externally and internally with pliers and eventually strangled her with a wire coat hanger. Yeah, that was a bad one. Finally, as a final insult, they dumped her lifeless body on a random front lawn. Yeah, they, uh, uh, they, they taped, they taped it. And it's, it's, it's horrible. Oh yeah. Listening to the audio. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I would listen to maybe a thirty-second soundbite. It's yeah, it was enough. Uh, both men were caught a month after killing Shirley. Um, they are still imprisoned in maximum security institutions to this day, and both remain unrepentant. Yep. Yeah. yeah I will sick, link sick if you're interested in the. I think isn't this a two-parter too? Yeah, we did it in two parts. Um, I will link in the description below if you if you haven't seen that and want to watch the more detailed story about these two jackasses. Yeah, um, it'll be in the description. Yeah, they actually made a there was a movie. Yeah, back in the late seventies, early eighties, maybe on that on those guys. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy story. It's yeah, story. It's, one of the worst we've ever. Yeah, done, it's really. probably one of the worst. Yeah, between that one and the. Uh, and the in the in the uh, the shed, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the toy box toy killer. box killer. Yeah, yeah. Not to be confused with him. He's a whole different. Yeah, he's a whole crazy echo. So this one is entitled "The Man Who Killed Halloween." Uh, have you ever heard of the wives' tale about? I mean, I think everybody has the poisoned sweets. Yeah, like you go trick or treating and. You know, there's the crazy neighbor that gives out the razors yeah, and the or check whatever the candy when you bring it home. Make sure, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, luckily that's not a real thing. Except, yes, <laughs> it once was in Texas, 1974. Yes, it was. Yeah, Ronald Clark O'Brien laced five pixie sticks with potassium cyanide and planned on killing five local kids. Mm-hmm. Among them, his son. Yes, it's crazy his kid. Why, you might ask? Well, the plan was to blame the poisoning on a neighbor, see him imprisoned, Mm -hmm. and O'Brien could collect the insurance policy he'd taken out on his young son. Yep. Telling you, man. That's sick, dude. Yeah. Your kids. Yeah. Kids. So 11-year-old Timothy ate his cyanide-filled sour candy on his dad's suggestion. Can you imagine giving your own kid cyanide? No. No. It had enough poison in it to kill two people. I could even, I mean, I spayed my kids once. I, I felt bad doing it. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. I mean, yeah. I could, I mean, shit. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother level. Yeah. Uh, within an hour of eating the lace pixie stick, he was hospitalized and declared dead. Luckily for the other four children, fast thinking and acting local detectives, thank God, thank God, figured out what had happened due to the smell on young Timothy's breath and confiscated the other pixie sticks before they could be passed out and consumed. Oh, thank God. Right? On the 31st of March, 1984, Ronald Clark O'Brien, dubbed the man who killed Halloween... He did, basically. ...was put to death by the state in Huntsville, Texas. As the liquid chemicals entered his veins, a bang mob of 300 locals shouted, trick or treat, and threw hard candy at a small group of anti-death penalty protesters. Wow. (laughs) Can you imagine that scene? 
<laughs> man, what if, I, what, what if it's, anybody recorded it? I'd like to see it. I don't know. That's got to, there should be a, I'll have to see if I can find a news yeah, article or something. Find something on YouTube but it's, somewhere. Wow. I just imagine all these people trick or treat throwing <laughs> candies at these anti death penalty people. Oh, man. Diddy looks like a, I don't know. It looks like, you know what he looks like? I don't know how to back up, but it's all right. He looked like, um, you've seen the movie Trick or Treat? Yeah. The one dad that does the carving yeah. of the head or what? He looks like that guy, doesn't yeah. he? I yeah. won. I kind of wonder if what maybe if they, they, uh, what if they play a part in that movie or based, based, it, based off. it off of him or whatever because of the history. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Chris Jenkins. This is Chris Jenkins here. Okay. And he died at Halloween. Okay. Unlike all the other poor murder victims in this uh, story, Chris Jenkins could very well be tied into a widespread crime phenomenon, one known as the smiley face murder theory. Yes. Have you heard about this? Oh, yes. I wholeheartedly think we need to do a whole episode. I think we do, too. On the smiley face murder theory, which we'll talk about what that is here in just a second. Um, but University of Minnesota student Jenkins, the one pictured here, mm -hmm. disappeared Halloween 2002 turning up in the Mississippi River, still wearing his Halloween costume some four months later. Wow. His death is believed by local police to have been the result of accident or suicide. But the similarities between Jenkins' death and those of many other young men found in waters across North America have led many to wonder if there's not a serial killer on the loose. So, what yeah. is... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, what is the smiley face murder theory, you might ask? Well... Here's a quick Wikipedia definition. Okay. What we got? Um, the smiley face murder theory, also known as the smiley face murders, smiley face killings, and smiley face gang, is a theory advanced by retired NYC detectives Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte, as well as Dr. Lee Gilbertson, a criminal justice professor and gang expert at St. Cloud University. It alleges that 45 young men found dead in bodies of water across several Midwestern American states from the late 1990s to the 2010s did not accidentally drown, as concluded by local law enforcement agencies, but were victims of one or multiple serial killers. The term smiley face became connected to the alleged murders when it was made public that the police had discovered graffiti depicting a smiley face mm -hmm. near locations where they think the killer dumped the bodies in at least a dozen of the cases. Mm -hmm. So they kind of find the same spray-painted yeah, smiley, smiley face. face Interesting theory. Uh, Gannon wrote a textbook case study on the subject titled Case Studies and Drowning Forensics. Uh, the response of law enforcement investigators and other experts has been largely skeptical to this. It's kind of like the Zodiac. Yeah. But I kind of, I mean, that's crazy. You know, you find a body in Minnesota and then one yeah. in Ohio, but uh -huh. they all have the same little spray painted. Smiley face. Almost like Mark of the Killer thing going on. Well, some of those guys did that. Yeah. Oh, some yeah. had their little. Got to mark your, mark your territory. Yep. Right. Too bad. This one's titled A Halloween Costume, The Perfect Disguise. True. Los Angeles hairdresser Peter Fabiano. Okay, Fabiano. Fabiano. Got a dog named Fabio. Yeah. Yeah, not Fabiano, but Fabio. <laughs> he opened his front door to trick-or-treaters on Halloween evening 1957. Before he could reach for a few gobstoppers to throw, throw in the brown paper bag, uh, bullets blasted out of the bag. And into his chest. Wow. What'd you say? I was like, gobstoppers. Oh, I've heard that forever. Those are old school, man. Yeah. He'd been shot to death with a twenty two caliber pistol. Why is the twenty two always the gun? Seems like every everybody never gets killed. It's a twenty two or a thirty eight. I think it's the go to. They're smaller, right? Yeah, true. I don't yeah, know. It's, just, it's, it's crazy. They must have been popular back in 57. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the pair of trick or treaters on his porch were Gold, uh, Golden Pizer and Joan Rabble. Both okay. pleaded guilty to murder and served lengthy prison terms. The two women were lovers. Joan was also seeing Fabiano's wife, Betty, though. Oh. This is a tangled web of a mess. A of triangle. A Jealous and enraged, she plotted to get Peter out of the picture with Pizer's help. Why are these old people out trying to treat him? They were doing just to kill him. Nice. This is the whole plan. Oh, yeah, okay. To right. get him to, they know he's going to answer the door for two yeah. people in costumes, sure. yeah. and they're standing there with the the gun yeah, in, in the, the trick bag. or treat yeah. bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. The date the date was picked as it was seen as the perfect night to uh, skulk the neighborhood in disguise, and it was. Yeah. Not that it helped them Obviously. get away with it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Smart ladies. Mm -hmm. That's just like the... A smart threesome of ladies. Like the guy at dress, or the... The clown, the killer. 
It was dressed like a clown in California. Oh, yeah. Killed the lady at the door. Yeah. She's a clown fanatic collector. So, of course, she's going to answer the door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one's called The Neighbor from Hell. Hmm. So, picture this, Mike. Halloween night, 1973. Okay, picturing it? I'm picturing it. The city of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Okay. Fond du Lac. Nine-year-old Lisa French, dressed up as a the littlest hobo. Okay. <laughs> went trick-or-treating. She only got next door. That's as far as she got? Literally the next door neighbor. Dear God. That neighbor, Gerald Turner, pictured here. Yeah. Opened up. Took little Lisa into his home and shut the door behind her. Dear God. Literally like a movie. Turner then raped and killed her, stuffing her tiny body in a plastic bag and dumping it in a nearby field. So her parents weren't with her. I guess she was going out on her own trick-or-treating. I don't know what's up with that. But they knew the first house she went to was next door. Right. Yep. Wow. Um, As of 2018, the Halloween killer has been eligible for parole, but the state continues to refuse his release. Thank God. Uh, there, I think I would continually, <laughs> right? Yeah. Their argument is that he is quote, a sexually violent person and should not be released yeah, yeah, back. Well, into society. Yeah, he is. yeah. And that's probably not his first victim. Probably not. I'm telling. Mm. I'm do he, uh, he looks like a chomo. Yeah. This one is whether appropriately or inappropriately titled all trick, no treat. All trick, no treat. When 12 year old trick or treater, T.J. Darasaw knocked on Quentin Patrick's door in the city of Sumter, South Carolina on Halloween night, 2008. He expected candy. What he got was 29 bullets through the front door from a fully automatic AK-47. Holy shit. 11 of those bullets hit him, killing him instantly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The poor kid's dad and younger brother were also hit, but pulled through and survived. So they were out there with him. Yeah, they were. It was so. It's his dad and these and the dad's two sons. Wow. He's killed instantly. the The brother and dad are both injured, but they make a recovery. Wow. It turns out that Quentin Patrick was a convicted drug dealer that had upset a rival gang of dealers and was fully expecting retribution. <laughs> what he got was blood on his hands and thirty years inside prison. He should have been put to death, man. Like, he's not realizing it's Halloween and people are probably going to be ringing his doorbell. You got your porch light on. What would you expect? So the first time someone rings it, he just opened up. You think? uh, You would think people are coming to you and ring the doorbell? Right. They're not going to ring the doorbell, dude. (laughs) Yeah. They're going to kick the door in. Exactly. Yeah. God damn, dude. Oh, hey, here's a winner. You recognize this guy? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Here we go. This is the son of Sam. Yep. So this is interesting. David Berkowitz, also known as the son of Sam, Sam. responsible for New York City's 1977 Summer of Sam Reign of Terror, right? Right. Is a man who knows murder. He sure does. Arguably so. Yep. He certainly knew about the murders of Ronald Sisman and Elizabeth Platzman and in advance. Okay. How, you might ask? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've done that numerous times yeah. this episode. Oh, you may yeah. ask? While Berkowitz didn't plan and kill the Manhattan couple, he was in jail when he predicted their Halloween 1981 deaths. Oh. Yes. Apparently, he's psychic, too. It's been said. So how did he know that they're going to be shot in the head, execution style? Well, he had long since claimed that he was only partly responsible for the killings attributed to him. Berkowitz says that he was part of a satanic cult and that Sisman had a video of one of the Son of Sam shootings that was going to make its way to the authorities. Oh, yes. So the cult killed him to protect themselves. Which I'd say this is a very good argument that there is more than just him. Yes. So is there any truth to the rumor? Well, one of the greatest books of crime nonfiction ever, Mari Terry's The Ultimate Evil, argues in great detail that there is some truth to this. I can believe it. Which, you know, obviously the full truth will... Probably never emerge, no, but, no, no. but how else would he know unless there is a cult of people doing this stuff? Well, I'm plus, I mean, he had a following. Could like have been all a these, follower. All those guys have a following. Yeah, unfor- like somehow they become like famous. Yeah, well, because the, the, the stuff. media makes them famous. Yeah. But it's weird. Like, I, I get we're doing a podcast right now, and in a way we're talking we about are. a famous, You're right. You're right. a famous person. 
But where I fail to make the connection is how how do like there's a female watching this and and they're treating us talking about him as if he's a rock star yeah. or a, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you just think everybody's well, disgusted. Well, there's women. I mean, I worked in a prison okay. a long, long time ago and seeing the type of women that come in and visit these guys, and you'd be amazed. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't even score chicks like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you saying like very like attractive females? Yes. Okay. Yeah, drive nice cars. That's what know. I'm saying. They treat these guys like rock stars. I don't care. Yeah, it. they're they're they never they always have money on the on the book on their books. Yeah, nice always taking care to of. Visit them. Yeah, and they're in there for you know murder, mass murder, serial yeah, killing, whatever. whatever. Yeah, it's just like, well, it's just like the Menendez Menendez brothers. Yeah, they yeah. got married in prison. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't either. <laughs> Beyond me, uh, it, uh, it just—I don't think they should be allowed to get married, honestly. Right. Just like they shouldn't be allowed to get. Uh, I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't get me going. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get a com- comment yep, section yep, going yep, here. Yep. I'll leave it alone. All right. Killers and masks. It's mostly just a movie thing, right? Nope. So it makes sense that on one of a few times, a real life murder is committed by a masked man. Oh. And that that mask is from a film. Hmm. In a. I like how this, in the unlawful killing, is there a lawful? I mean, I guess execution would be a lawful killing. Well, I mean, there's a stand your ground. True. Okay. In, in the killing of a 19-year-old yeah. Brooklyn man, well, Anthony yeah, yeah. Seabury, in 2013, the killer was sport, uh, spotted sporting a ghost face mask Oh, as seen in the popular horror uh, franchise Scream. Yeah. Like, literally dressed up like... Hmm. I'm glad I didn't pick a scream outfit for tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the crazy thing is this case remains unsolved, although it's thought by some that the shooting was tied in with other shootings across New York City that same night, oh. for which a man was later shot and killed by police officers. Okay. So. Yeah, we'll probably never. I mean, if if, if you don't know by now. Right. Good chance you're never going to know. Right. Yeah, exactly. This one's called a truly unwelcome house guest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adrian Insagna, Leslie Mazzara, and Lauren Menza spent most of Halloween night, 2004, handing out treats to door-knocking kids at their home in Napa, California. Okay. Nice area. At approximately 11 p.m., the three women retired to bed. There would be one more person knocking on the door that night. Okay. Uh, Menza, after hearing a blood-curdling scream, ran out of the house and drove away. Mazzara and Insagna were left in the house. Both had been savagely stabbed to death by Eric Matthew Koppel, a friend of one of the women. Wow. Koppel turned himself into police and confessed, but explained his motive for the double slaying. Um, he turned himself in, really? Yeah. Like right after? Yeah. Turned himself in and confessed. Wow. Um, he's now serving a full life sentence without the possibility of parole. Did, they, did you see the reason? What was the reason? Um, I don't know. The article I had said, but explained his mo. I think it was should have been, but didn't explain his mo. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, so I don't think he told them why. Mm. He's, I don't know. Maybe she turned him down. He wanted to be more than a friend. I don't know. This is all. Well, yeah, I get. It. Yeah, hypothetical it. here. Yeah, I'm just checking. No, I, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I, no, you know, no, you don't have to take offense. I was just Oops. saying you. Oops. You kind of. It's like you're mad at me. I'm not, mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. You know what time it is? What time is it? It's Wheel of Death. What? what? Wheel of Death. All right. Let's get the bucket of doom. We're, dude, we've got we've had people signing up, man. Yeah, I know. It's great. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. More people need to. I know, more people. Um, if you want to sign up to play after you watch what's about to uh, transpire, transpire, head to our website, tumormorons.com, or follow the QR code on your screen right now. Yep, QR codes. Got to love them. You'll get your name here in the bucket of doom. Mike is going to reach in, draw a name out of there, and let us know who we got. Mm. Amber. Sweet. We will get Amber on the line and play the Wheel of Death. That's all it says, Amber. Amber. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm sure there's probably only one. Probably. Amber, hello. Hi. Hi. Is she there? She's, I can hear her. Can you hear her? I can hear her. Can we see her? Amber, how you yep. doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, fantastic. You ready to play the Wheel of Death? 
I am super excited to play the Wheel of Death. Okay, I am sure you're well aware of the rules, um, but we'll explain it for anybody we, watching the show. Rules? Yeah, we got rules. What are the rules? Well, you first you got to sign up like Amber did on our website, okay. tubermorons.com. There you'll see a link. Play the Wheel of Death. Put in your information. Okay. That puts you in the bucket, which we, we just drew Amber from. True. And then you get to be a calling guest. Now, the rules, we, we got to make a quick adjustment to this, Amber, because Mike's a little gimpy. So you don't get to choose who gets to spin on this one. I'll be spinning for you. Yeah, I had shoulder surgery. Because oh. Andy threw me down the stairs. Long story. <laughs> Hopefully you get uh recover well. <laughs> yeah. nope. he, he really didn't throw me down the stairs, but it was funny to say that. He will get there eventually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then I'll throw him down the stairs again. Yeah. Yep. Uh so this here is our beautiful wheel of death. Um, you've got all kinds of different options on here: gift cards, decals, the famous wheel of death t-shirt, um, hoodies, uh, buy me a coffee memberships, all that good stuff. So Amber, what I want you to do is just tell me, describe to me how hard you want me to spin this thing, and I'll get it spinning for you. Um, give it all you got. Oh God! Just as hard as I can do it. Yep. Okay. It goes your back again. Here, here <laughs> we go. <laughs> round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody, nobody knows. knows. Oh wow! Hey, it's a Grump Fish level. Buy me a coffee membership. You cool with that? That's super exciting. Yes. Awesome. So right. you will start to see your name on our website as a supporter. And you're also going to start getting emails from buy me a coffee with all of our bonus episodes we do every other week. Yeah. Oh, that's super exciting. You gave me a whole weekend of binging. Yeah. Yes. I uh, actually binged uh, your podcast from Tennessee back home. Uh, so okay, we, cool. watch, we listen to all your podcasts. Oh, oh cool. well, that's good. Yeah, like thank that. you. Yeah, Thanks. well, we've got, I think we're at like 22 bonus episodes. So you get access to the full library. So you yeah. can sit there and binge all you want. There you go. Super exciting. <laughs> awesome, Amber. Thank you very much for playing Wheel of Death on Two Murder Morons. And thanks yeah. for being a fan. Yeah, thanks for Thank you. Show. All right. Looking see you. See you. Bye. All right, hey, Amber. Hey. hey, sweet. Good win. Yeah. Good win. Congratulations. We hope you enjoy that membership. Yeah, always good when you get a uh, membership. I know, right? Yeah. For those of you that don't know, we do have. Uh, if you uh, buy me a coffee, um, it's yeah. it's kind of like uh, it's like Patreon. Hey, Patreon, same thing. Uh, but if you head to buymeacoffee.com slash tumor or morons, you see we got different levels of membership. All of them come with access to all our bonus episodes. Yep. That Amber will hopefully be enjoying here and binge watching very soon, like we said. Yep. yep. She said she was going to. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, go to that website, click the QR code on your screen, check it out. Yeah, become a member. Yeah. Hey, or you know. You can just buy us a coffee. Or, yeah, just one time little, one time little purchase. Hey, nice job, guys. Yeah, yeah, Thank, yeah. Thanks for dressing up like idiots yeah. <laughs> for Halloween and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> entertaining exactly. me for a half hour, you know? Yeah, yeah whatever. But, hey, you know, every it, it helps. Yeah. It is very greatly appreciated. It, it is, definitely. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for another way to support us, uh, merch. Merch. We got a merch store. Sure do. A ton of t shirts and, and hoodies and everything. underwear. Shit. Dog everything. hoodies. A little bit of everything. Yeah, we got underwear with our picture. We got underwear with our pictures on. I know. You can have us on your butt cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> no one's ever going to. No. no one has ordered a pair, nor will anyone ever order a pair. I'm going to. Are you? Yeah. But it'll just be us. I'm going to get it from a wife for Christmas. Are you? Because <laughs> you want to see my butt on her ass cheeks? Um, about mine. What? We're both on there. Oh, God. No. <laughs> I'll have to tape over it. <laughs> I'll put Jack on there. Okay. Oh, man. Um, I also want to say, um, if you want to sign up for the bonus episodes, our newest bonus episode comes out this Friday. Sure does. Um, and it's an, it's a, another Halloween murder mystery that you don't want to miss. A cowboy, a clown, a lion, and a hockey fan walk into a bar. There you go. There you go. It sounds like the opening of a joke, but the punchline really isn't that funny. No, it's the not. The hockey fan ends up dead in the parking lot outside the bar, and the killer fades away into the night. Yep. If you want to know the rest of the story, become a member. You'll get to see the bonus episode this Friday. Yep. Anything else I'm missing? Mm, yeah, we got we got merch. Got that. We did our disclaimer. Yeah, I think we did everything. I think we're we're rolling, dude. Yeah, pretty good for you know being back after being off. I know while. being rusty, not doing it for like a month. Yeah. I know. Feels good, man. Yeah. yeah back, it really does. back in the swing of things. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, you know. Well, as you're like fifty percent back in the swing. Yeah, fifty. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Physical therapy today. Yeah. I'm 50. Okay. Back up to 50%. Yeah, maybe. Hey, as long as you can sit there and talk, man, we're good. I know. You know? Yeah. That's the best part about I, this. Dude, I could have done it the day after I had my surgery. It's not like we're playing basketball or anything. You could have recorded a show that, that, that day I had surgery. Dude, that would have been amazing because you were not yourself. I mean, I, yeah, they wouldn't, I couldn't wake up. <laughs> Yeah. Good Lord. Jesus Christ. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a very happy Halloween, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Yeah. Bye, everyone. See you.